Hello everyone, in this video you will see the first part of an interview that I did with Vincent Ho, a multi-award winning composer of orchestral chamber vocal and theater music. His works have been described as brilliant and compelling by the New York Times and hailed for their expressiveness and textural beauty. Over the course of three videos, Vincent will talk about the beginning of his career, the challenges that he faced, the development of his musical language, as well as his compositional process. We're going to talk about each movement of his marvelous Arctic Symphony, which was nominated for a Juno Award, and Vincent will give great advices for young composers. Come with me. was uh, commissioned uh, from, uh, well, Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra, uh, because I was a composer in residence, and also the World Climate Change Community to celebrate their interpolar year, their chapins uh, once every 50 years. I don't know if you remember, but 2009, 2010, uh, they had their uh, World Climate Change Conference in Copenhagen, where all the world's leading, you know, uh, environment sci scientists, environmental scientists came together and shared their, you know, research okay. and did all these presentations. And to highlight that, I was commissioned to write uh, a work uh, that was inspired by the Arctic. And so part of the program was for me to go up to the Arctic on uh, Canada's uh, research vessel called the Amundsen and to be with the scientists that were there to learn to be in the Arctic for one. That was a neat experience. Oh, it was an amazing experience. Uh, so I got to you know see what the scientists were doing on the research vessel, going to various sites in the Arctic, and more importantly also to meet with the indigenous community, to see um, to meet with them, to, uh, see, uh, be in, interact with their culture, uh, to learn what the Arctic was all about from a cultural uh, point of view, and that gave rise to understanding what it was I was experiencing there. And during that process, I, you know, I had a, a, a collected a lot of uh, ideas, wrote a little, uh, some notes to myself, and uh, that's uh, what inspired me to write the uh, Arctic Symphony. It's in five movements. And you, and you brought like a, a notebook, uh, not yeah, like yeah. music transcripts. Yeah, what what do you bring when yeah, you? Uh, while I was at the Arctic, while I was sitting on the ship, I would just pull out my notebook and just doodle or doodle away or explore some ideas in graphical form and without thinking putting too much effort into it just enough for me to just you know get it down okay it's fine and then uh, you know flip the page and then just move on all right so say like i had like an idea graphical idea or some sort like okay. here's actually this one's a good one and then uh then i would come to the uh the manuscript and try and figure out how to notate it in some way form now this is the final product i mean but before that says so there, there were other pages and pages of me writing out uh some of these ideas in notation form and try and chisel it out each and every single day again ask myself okay each and every day is this good enough is this what i want is how can i make this better uh, or is it you know maybe i should start over kind of a thing and so that would be the process <laughs> The piece opens with arctic sounds, like the wind, gusting winds and uh, the waters. So the those sounds are, are audio? Yeah, those are uh, on CD. So they had the option of just playing that at the beginning and at the end as bookends. And also on the CD, uh, there's option to have uh, the arctic sounds with the uh, Inuit choir that you hear that comes in. I really 
felt like first time I listened to it like wow I'm being transported to that place you know like I can hear like the winds and with the all those like scales like in the you no know, woodwinds and you know I tell you a little secret all right <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was all thrown in uh, last minute for the premiere, actually. We didn't really? know if it was going to work. No, uh, oh, I it did work. <laughs> no, I <laughs> because I had written the piece. It was done. I got it. I sent it to the orchestra uh, a month or two before the performance. And then the uh, the Arctic, uh, sorry, the uh, environmental scientist, the person that was leading it, uh, Dr. David Barber, the person who actually commissioned me, he's at the University of Manitoba. He said, oh, you know, we're bringing, oh, we have some funds, we're bringing in this uh, children's choir, Inuit you know, choir, would you be able to use them in this Arctic Symphony? And I was like, oh, but the pieces are written, how am I going to do this? Okay, I think I, 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 I've got an idea, I've got an idea. In order to make this work, I need some Arctic sounds because, like, it, it just seems weird if to, you know, just I thought, the, yeah, 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 exactly. So I thought, okay, well, what if we opened with them and ended with them? So they sing like the open uh -huh. introductory song that they have and they close with a goodbye song, a uh, song of hope. And the, or, the Inuit choir came on the Friday, and by that point, the orchestra would have already rehearsed the piece. And we had one dress rehearsal on the Saturday, we had just that one dress rehearsal to make this work, okay? And so we tried that out, it worked beautifully, and that's why I said, okay. We're keeping that in. Yeah. So I <laughs> agree. Like it did work beautifully, sets the the mood, of the you no know, environment, yeah. and then the orchestra the strings come with those tremolos and like just setting those chords, changing you know, like a very magical atmosphere. So. The third movement is very fun. Yeah, like, and and uh, we can e li really listen to uh, those like engines and the old percussive sounds and right. the the rhythms and the layers of rhythms and kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I couldn't uh, no, I couldn't write a piece without or a symphony without acknowledging the experience I had on that uh, on that uh, research vessel because it's uh, quite a vessel. I mean, there's so many things that are there that made it such a uh, wondrous experience for me. And uh, I'd say that it played a huge role in my whole experience of being there. So it's there. based on the sounds when you were aboard? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, I mean, I wouldn't say it was like the sounds were consistent throughout, but it was yeah. a, a lot of the sounds that I wrote in that movement uh, called Aboard the Emerson um, was inspired by the sounds I heard while I was on that ship. In the, the last movement, we have this encounter of two different yeah. musical worlds, right? right? Right. Yeah, with that movement, I well, one of the things I learned from that trip was um, uh, seeing the uh, scientists of the Western world coming together with the uh, elders of the indigenous world and sharing their information. And they're seeing the Arctic from two different ways, uh, one from a scientific point of view, the other from a traditional cultural point of view. Um, and I felt that was an amazing meeting of two worlds in so many ways and I want to capture that in musical form. So with this last movement I want to I did that in musical form and by was first starting with a section that was inspired by mu the musical tradition of the western world and then it goes into the next section with a uh, you know, very uh, I guess uh, aggressive music that was inspired by the music of the Inuit world. Music that was inspired by their uh, throat singing, their folk songs, and and such, and their rhythms, and it climb the piece cli that movement climaxes with the two juxtaposed on top of one another. So that was my way of uh, the uh, representing the two of them coming together in harmony. And well. What advice would you give to well young composers that are starting right now, emerging composers? Well, based on your, the lessons you you 
you learned? Like, well, if you would pick one. <laughs> well, first two. of all, first of all, I always find myself as uh, um, just uh, even though I'm you know turning 44, I still see myself as an emerging composer because <laughs> I'm, I'm constantly you know learning, I'm constantly growing, and I'm constantly trying to do new things. So. Uh, I guess I get maybe that's the first advice that's to always think like an emerging composer always think as a young composer <laughs> to, I agree, I totally yeah, agree. yeah 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 uh, so maybe that's one advice I uh, actually that makes me think of an, I guess another uh, bit of advice is trust the process I mean it's gonna be I mean it's always a frustrating journey <laughs> I know that as a creative artist because uh, you always want to make sure you get it right but uh, by just trusting the process and not thinking about what the end goal is, each day could be an adventure to discover something more or discover uh, a new layer that's uncovered rather than trying to force something that you already have preconceived, which is fine too. It's good to go to your uh, studio with something already in mind, but it's also good to have enough, just leave enough room to, to, to have those moments of creative breakthroughs or personal breakthroughs that where you discover something those aha moments and those are the moments that uh, contribute to the growth at least that is for me awesome yeah well Vincent thank you so much for your time yeah, today it was fun. great talking to you yeah, yeah thank no you no problem at all it's really appreciate it. awesome. what music paths are being explored today What interesting techniques are being used in composition? Welcome to New Music Pets.